start with Clark Smith. It's 2000 freestyle today, 1742. Uh, I remember you saying back in 2015 when he went 1744 that uh, it gave you chills. So yeah. talk about uh, that swim today and what that meant. Well, first of all, he had an option between a 300 and a 2000, and he picked the 2000. So that gives you an insight into how tough he is and what a good mental state he's always in around the water. So that, he just goes 26 plus the whole way and hammers it on the end. He's gonna do something special. We felt last year, Olympic trials, and that summer we felt our team needed another year. So we're getting that other year, and this year at NCAAs and uh, World Champ Trials, we're, I think we're gonna really be good. Talk about some specifics. Who you, who you think is gonna be there? Who, who's leading the team? Uh, obviously Clark's part of that charge, but uh, who else do you foresee having a breakout summer? Well, Jack Conger in the Olympic Trials did not swim good butterfly, and. He's going to swim Great Butterfly this next trial. And I'm counting on that. And he's working for that. And that's even more important than me counting on it. If he doesn't work for it, it doesn't matter what I count on. And, um, and Will Lacone missed out in the breaststroke. And he lost six pounds last summer. He's cooking for himself and his strength was up so good at the NCAAs, and he, when he lost that six pounds, lost a lot of that strength. So we're back this year, and if I have to cook for him, I'll cook for him. Actually, I'm good at ordering out. We, we, we were just talking with Will, uh, and kind of talking about the, the mental benefits of swimming up. Uh, beyond your race. So 200 guys swimming 300s, 100 guys swimming 150s. What that does for a swimmer mentally going into championship season, I know Will said that, goes 255 in a 300 breaststroke out in 155. That just gives him a lot of confidence when he does sure. go to swim the 200. So talk about why you have him do that and what you think the benefits are. Well, I love the, it's the only thing I'm gonna be allowed to be named after me the Eddie Reese invite, because it gives them off distances, lengths of swims that they don't know real well, and they have to take a chance, and it requires, there's fear involved in anything you do swimming. So you have to overcome that. And we have our 500 guys go 600s, 200, 100 guys go 300s. So I love that. That sets them up for the easy part that's to come, the shorter distance. 200, well, Will sprinted to 200 last year in the 200 breaststroke. He broke the team record out at the 100, which Brendan Hansen's not over yet. That's unbelievable. He could do that and still go 56. Well, our goal this year is not ever go 28 O's. Got to go better than that. And I have, he's got a real good chance of doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, kind of today, too, you mentioned earlier, um, and a lot of people know this, that swimming's too, too hard of a sport not to have fun. Uh, so talk about that component of it as well, uh, what it does for these guys. Well, these odd distances take pressure off of them because no matter what you tell a swimmer, when they swim a race, they're going to compare that to what they've been. Whether it's what they've been shaved, they'll look at that, and then what's their best unshaved. And this takes them out of that, and it makes it easier for them to take a chance. Like we had a guy today go 20.2 in the 50, and he's been swimming the 500 because his, he wasn't strong enough to swim the 50. So he's gonna cause a dilemma the next four weeks figuring out where to put him. Because is he gonna be a 19-3-50 man or is he gonna be 
a 415 500 man. So we do this, swimming is a very hard sport. And there's pressure from all areas, from you, from your teammates, from the coach, all of that stuff, from the parents. And so we try to have fun and it's probably the most fun we've had just on the 25, legitimate 25, first time ever. And that'll do nothing but help us along the way. We had 10-8, 10-9 out of two guys in the breaststroke. We had an 8-9 and a 9-0 for freestyle. So we know those guys can swim a real good 50. And so we're going to probably try that. Yeah. And then uh, over the years, you've had numerous swimmers who have that range that you mentioned, can do the 50, can do the 500, guys like Dave Walters, Ricky Barons. So how do you as a coach manage that when you're making these decisions? Walk, walk me through that decision-making process a little bit with these guys. If you're a 100, 200 man, feel like you've got to swim a good 300. If you're a 500 man, I want 500 guys of 400 diameters, swim a good 1,000. Back years ago, before the big suits came out, if you were under 420, 400 meters IM, you were world class. And everybody that broke 420 either had the background in the mile or they were Tom Wilkins, Mike Berriman, Clark Burkle that could go under 215, 200 meters breast. Behrman's 210, Wilkins 212. So they could split 110, actually. Behrman split 109 on the breaststroke leg of the 400 Diane. Sadly, same, of his, same as his backstroke. But that enabled him, he's out in a minute, back in a minute. He's 418. Chad Carvin broke 420. And Chad had one stroke, but he was in good enough shape, didn't matter. He could move his arms, and he did it. So that's how I view all these swimmers. That's why we train for the range. So what's the team's mindset? Where, where are you guys right now in training uh, with Big 12s in three weeks, I believe, and then it's, it's two ways a few weeks after that? Well, I feel a lot better today when we put suits on because one of my flyers that went 150 in the 200 fly went 114 for the 150. So he's not as bad as he looked, but for the most part, I've got some guys that are going to be on singles and on two or 3,000 a day going into conference or they're not going to be as good as they could be at conference. When in doubt, I pull them out. So I'm not afraid to rest. Because I know they've worked. They've shown me what they could do. If it's not good enough, I'm going to rest the fool out of them. They're all for that. I remember hearing a story back in the day of, of a certain swimmer who you had not swim, touch the water for an entire week uh, before NC2As. What? I've had three or four guys do that. And if there is, if they're really bad at this meet, we've got a little over four weeks to conference. This is a hard sport. I can't keep beating them. I went by each person in our team meeting and changed what they're doing in the weight room. And most of them, all they're complaining about is their legs are terrible. So I've taken them off all the leg exercises in the weight.